grateful to the Lord for this opportunity to share what the Lord has done in my life and for him moving back, moving me back to Orlando to be a part of this body. As many of you know, this is my second profession of faith that I have given at this lake and in front of Cornerstone. For those who do not know my backstory, I was raised in a Presbyterian church in Tallahassee, Florida. Even though I went through confirmation class and had to go to church every Sunday with my mom, grandmother, and brother, God was not present in my home. Just like many we witnessed to, I had no idea what it meant to be a Christian. Due to the hard times at home, it led me seeking love, acceptance, identity, and security in others. However, I always had an issue with trust, so I would keep people at arm's length away, not really wanting to let people in, but at the same time, wanting to cling to anyone that showed love to me. In high school, I was involved in a charismatic church at a Fellowship of Christian Athletes retreat. I said a prayer, but there was not a desire um, for God or things of God. And that was my freshman year in high school, by the way. Um, so I still love my sin. At an FCA event in college, I met Ashley Mudge. During a visit at Cornerstone, I could see being a Christian wasn't about walking an aisle and praying a prayer. It's repentance, turning from sin to serve God. For about a year after returning from Army basic training, I lived in Orlando until my tour in Italy and then Iraq. With Ashley, I attended Cornerstone. At one point, I had believed, I had repented, and was baptized. I was evangelizing, going to church every Sunday, attending college group as well as small group. There were times my friends would counsel me on sin they would see. For instance, my issues with pride, not trusting the Lord and his people, the love of my sin, and the sin of homosexuality. A point came where I would push them away because I had no desire to repent or acknowledge what I was doing with sin. I wasn't broken over my sin. Many times I would just make excuses for the sin I was committing. By his mercy and the person I work in Jesus Christ and the gospel, he has opened my eyes to see my sin and the beauty of the gospel that saves sinners, which by the power of the gospel I see the wages of sin is death. As 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not, be, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. He granted me repentance and a repentant heart before him around March of last year, causing me to turn from my sin, to count the cost no matter the cost, and the desire to follow him. My heart's desire is to bring him glory. God has changed my heart, my desires, has made me teachable where I once was hard of correction and didn't want nor desired wise counsel. Before knowing the Lord, I was making excuses for sin. The Lord has, I was making excuses for sin. The Lord has made me to desire to be transparent with those who disciple me. A dear sister has been faithful to remind me <laughs> of a truth in 2 Corinthians 5.17 when I battle with assurance that says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am a new creation in Christ. Thanks be to God. It is as Ephesians 2.8 and 9 says, for by grace, I have been saved through faith, and it is not of myself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest I should boast. A hymn that has been a blessing to me since my salvation is, He will hold me fast. I battle a great deal with assurance, which has caused me to question whether to go through with giving my testimony today or not. But when I go through these doubts, I try to remember God's promises as well as the lyrics that say, When I fear my faith will fail. Christ will hold me fast. He will not let my soul be lost. His promises shall last. Bought by him at such a cost, he will hold me fast. It reminds me that nothing that happens in my life, the sins I commit, or even my doubt is where my assurance or even my doubt is where my assurance lies. It lies only in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And since God's justice was satisfied in Jesus' sacrifice for my sin, he will hold me fast and not let me go. I can trust his promises. Thanks be to God for the radical change he is doing. And it's only by his grace and mercy I can say these words. Glory to God.